In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. A most blessed new year to you. When I was a little kid, uh, we would go to this Mass early on the day after staying up all night, or the night after, whatever it is, the morning after staying up all night. You stay up till midnight to welcome in the new year, have some sort of a meal or something like that. You go to bed at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning, and then you have to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning again to be at Mass by 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock or something like that. And uh, that's just the way it was. And as little children, we didn't really know why. Uh, we thought, sort of thought, well, as long as you spend that much time having a great party for yourself, you have to do something for Jesus in the morning. We didn't really know what it was all about. January the 1st, it doesn't sound like a holy day, but it was. And we just sort of grouped it, together, grouped it together with Christmas the week before. That You stay up all night, you stay up till midnight then, you know, to welcome our Lord and then to open up presents and go to bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, then Mass in the, the next morning. So why not do the same thing one week later? And as far as we know, that's what the holy day was. That's what, as far as we knew, that's what the holy day was. And as we got older, we started to figure out, well, no, there's a little more to it. It's not just the beginning of the new year that we're celebrating. In fact, this could have happened, I don't know, in February, March, or April, uh, as far as that is concerned. But it is, uh, it's not about the new year, although we can certainly do that. We can say we come to Mass on the first day of the new year in order to uh, give thanks for all the blessings of the year before and in order to pray for all the grace we need for the year that comes. Even without the new year, we would still have this um, feast. And that is because this is the eighth day after the birth of our Lord. And he went through the ancient Jewish rite of the male children to be dedicated to God and separated from the world. Now, this is not the only time that our Lord went through some sort of Jewish rite, uh, even though he didn't have to. It happened on this occasion, it happened at the presentation, which we celebrate on the 2nd of February, and it happened at the baptism of our Lord. Three different times, he submitted himself to ancient rites of the people of God, even though he didn't need them. In fact, the third time, when it came to the baptism, St. John, his cousin, second cousin, was about to baptize him, and he said, to our blessed Lord, he said, it is you that should be baptizing me. And our Lord answered to him that no, uh, what you do right now, you don't understand, but you will. And here's the reason. Our Lord submitted himself to these things because we all are in him. So this rite, which our Lord went through on this day, eight days after his birth, is to separate him from the rest of men, the men of this world, and to dedicate him to God. The precise words He was made under the law that he might redeem them who were under the law to present him to the Lord. Our Lord, by going through this rite, is separated from the rest of the world, as all the Jewish people were supposed to be separated from the rest of the world. And he's dedicated to God. Not only is he separated from the rest of the world, but he has cut away from himself all vices. And that's why the Jewish people made use of this rite, was to be cut away from the rest of the world. But unfortunately, by the time our Lord came, you know, this is 4,000 years after the creation, 3,000 years after Abraham, by the time our Lord came, the Jewish people were just going through the rites, but they weren't going through the reality. So St. Paul is always, you know, uh, reprimanding this people of God, saying, you have all the rites. You say that you've gone through everything which is necessary, necessary to be a good Jew, but all you've done is the rites, and you have no purification of your heart. He says, you're not separated from the world, St. Paul says to them over and over again. Maybe 
in a human way, in a fleshly way, you have separated yourself from the world. But that's just the right, R-I-T-E, like we have here, the, the right of Holy Mass or the right of Holy Communion, the right of confession, the um, liturgical practice sort of or the doc doctrinal practice that we go through. You just have the right, you just have the physical, external covering, but you don't have the conversion of the heart. That's, why Saint, that's how St. Paul was constantly reprimanding the people of God. And he says, that's why you've missed the Messiah, and that's why you're not converted, and that's why you're going to be condemned. So our blessed Lord is separated from this world. He's separated from vice. He's dedicated to God. He is the first male child that opens the womb, and therefore he's called holy unto God. He must go through this rite. And in fact, uh, this is actually the presentation of a child, that, which would, we celebrate on the 2nd of February. Yes, the first male child that opens the womb shall be called holy unto God. That's, that was all created, that was all made by God, that rule. It was all made in honor of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the male child who is sanctified unto God the moment that he opens the womb. It's all because of our Lord. So, again, why is it that we normally would get up early in the morning after a night of a party and all the rest of it uh, to go to Mass on this day? It is because our Lord Jesus Christ was set apart from the rest of men on this day in order to, and, and sorry, and he was dedicated to God, like all the other Jewish boys were. But what's different about our Lord is he is the one, the one that was faithful to this mission. He really was separated from the world, and he was, really was separated from vice. And since all of us are in our Lord, in him we live and move and are, says St. Paul, since all of us are in our Lord, by him going through this practice on this day, we were separated from the world, and we are living unto God. He did it perfectly. He perfectly fulfilled his mission. He was given the name of Jesus on this day. That means Savior. And he perfectly lived and fulfilled the mission of Savior. Uh, I think it already started with his birth, but we can say starting on this day when he received his name. And you and I were there. And in this way, I don't mean that I believe in some sort of reincarnation or something like that. But we were there. In as much as our divine Lord, who takes on human flesh, is already separated from the rest of the world on this day, we live and move and are in him. We are separated from the world. And we're separated from vice. The world is cut away from us. And now you and I... All of us are fulfilling this mission of living the redemption along with our Lord. You may think, you know, why is it that I have to avoid sin? Why is it that I have to um, endure hardships and make my sufferings into sacrifices and so forth? We say we all know we have to do it because that gives glory to God. We don't want to sin. We don't want to offend God. And that's all true. Uh, be careful not to make your religion just kind of the negative side. You know, the reason we are avoiding sin, the, we, the reason we are enduring suffering and making sacrifice out of it is to join our blessed Savior in cutting ourselves away from the world, separating ourselves from the world, and being purified unto God. Our Lord had no need of purification. He is pure. He is God. But as I said, three times he went through a Jewish rite, or, you know, people of the Old Testament, people of God of the Old Testament. He went through their rites at least three times, even though he did not need them, because we, in him, are going through these rites, and we are being purified, separated from the rest of the world, cut off from sin and vices, dedicated unto God, baptized so that sin has no place in us, that all happened in our Lord, and we are in him. 
That's what we celebrate on this day. That's what we commemorate. That's what we honor on this day is our Lord's dedication to his Father, being purified from the world, etc. You might have noticed uh, that the collect for today, or the oration, is the exact same prayer we use at the end of the litany of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And you might be wondering, well, why, you know, I thought this is a feast of our Lord. Why are we celebrating the Mother of God on this day? That's because our Lord, uh, sorry, Blessed Mother, Mother Mary, saw her baby, her son, suffer on this day. It's also the, recognized as the first day of our Lord's suffering. It would have been enough suffering to the redeem the world already on this day. But that was not the plan of God. The plan of God is that our Lord would shed all of his blood on the cross and uh, nothing less than that. But Our Lady was suffering. She was suffering to see her son suffering. Therefore, we need to honor the Mother of God on this day. She is uh, the one we pray to in order to be united to our Lord in his sacrifice. She is the one who makes us live the life of sacrifice along with her son, and therefore she's honored in the collect of the Mass of today. So this is what we remember today. It is a new year. That's kind of secondary. What's primary is this separating of our Lord from the rest of the world to fulfill his divine mission. All of us were there. We live in him, and we are separated from the rest of the world to continue his divine mission. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.